Oh, sure. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Cool, I'm ready. How's my hair? Nicely coiffed. There you go. <laughs> cool, like it. Hey, greetings everyone. Thanks for joining us. I'm Taylor Hamill, uh, technical rep for DMM International. I'm here in uh, Minnesota, St. Paul, Minnesota, on a rather cloudy, soon to be rainy day. I'd like to, um, of course, thank Tree Stuff for putting this on, for asking me to participate, talk about some of the new products that DMM has coming out. Uh, if you're interested in more of these events, go to Tree Stuff's website, and it's treestuff.com slash events, and you'll find more information about upcoming uh, webinars and things there. So yeah, want to, yeah, thanks to Nick, thanks to Kale, everybody at Tree Stuff, good times. I'm broadcasting live from my kitchen, and today we're going to talk about, well, we'll answer some questions. Hopefully, you've got a lot of questions. But uh, the, the, the main thing today that we, I'd like to talk about are, are recently released or upcoming products uh, that DMM has uh, in the works. And, and one of those is the Micro Vault. If you haven't seen this, uh, it, it's basically a little teeny vault with a screw gate. And <clears throat> that can be mounted to several different surfaces. This, of course, uh, goes on to the tree motion quite nicely. And it'll also uh, mount to uh, another part that I don't have with me, unfortunately, called the parking lot. And then you can retrofit this to, to put on other harnesses, such as uh, Petzl Sequoia, et cetera, et cetera. And along with that, of course, we've recently released the uh, director carabiners. <clears throat> yeah, four different colors of the vault. The director carabiners, where's my camera? Super small. You can see uh, in my hand here, very, very tiny. This is the captive eye. We have a swivel eye, similar to our micro uh, swivel. That's on the end there, that's fixed. And of course we have then the yoke version. I'm going to get this in the light. So you can attach that directly to a, a sewn eye. And we also have some different spacers. This rope spacer that's in there now has a concave surface for the rope to fit on. And we also have then a spacer with a flat surface. Working backwards here with a flat surface. <laughs> This is confusing. Anyway, I'm trying to get it in the in the in the light. There we go. A flat surface that webbing uh, will sit on nicely there. And then we have the swivel boss, and this is similar to our uh, Nexus and Focus compact swivels, where you can remove the shackle and then install it in various different configurations. Here I've got, so there's a bow shackle, the wide one here, and also the D shackle. And I've got that here uh, just uh, installed onto the end of my lanyard, sewn connection. So now I've got a nice, tight, compact uh, swiveling connector on the end of my lanyard. You can add a boss and yoke together to make a swiveling 
oh, connector, this would be, you know, great in a rescue scenario, perhaps, to attach yourself to the victim, or, you know, any other million different configurations you can think of. These also work with our Linkit uh, components. And uh, boy, it's hard to set all these up. I only have a limited number. But here, for example, is the uh, uh, Nexus swivel, but same idea with the, the boss director would fit right in here to this uh, triple, this three-way Linkit system. There we go. The Y3, lots of configurations to deal to do there. That's you know theater rigging, stunt rigging, things like that. I'm sure, Arbor Culture could find lots of uses for it as well. And we also have that would fit with the yoke. Where's my? There we go. With the yoke, we've got a three-way here that sits in the yoke director, and really short, compact, two-piece. That would go, you know, carabiner to carabiner. And then a teeny tiny 90 degree link it to, to offset your carabiners by 90 degrees, of course, it'd sit like that. So that's pretty much the range. You've got, just to cover it again, captive eye, swivel eye, Yoke with either spacer, webbing, or uh, rope. And then, of course, we've got the swivel boss with either a D shackle or bow shackle. And that's the director line. Should we stop there for questions, Kale, or keep going? All right. Cool, very cool. So the <clears throat> we'll, we'll go on, move on to the micro vault. I've got I'm gonna get all tangled up here. So I have a few vaults on my harness. You know, their standard vaults are the uh, wire gate and also the the locking locking vault. And I have installed next to those. a micro vault on the harness here and how they install quite very easily just peel that back padding off and you have access to the um to the mounting screws there it's just a three millimeter allen key and away you go and you, you know, nice flat profile. You don't feel it poking in, poking into your sides or anything like that. So there's the size comparison, the micro vault compared to the other two. So quite tiny in comparison to the others. Screw gate for security. And that'll hold, excuse me. That'll hold a uh, two full-size carabiners Oh, can I get a ring in there too? I guess it won't fit a ring and a carabiner. But you can also use the, um, pull it up like like so to make to make room and you can you can fit stuff in and, and get stuff out when you need it. This, it won't, you won't be able to necessarily flip out larger items like carabiners like you can with the standard vault. You know, you can, you can, flip them in and out easily this way. This, because it's so compact, you pretty much, unless it's a webbing sling or something, you'll have to, you'll have to open that to, to get these, um, to get these out. But, but there you go. That'll easily hold a, a carabiner in a ring, for example. Another cool feature, and I'll, I'll do this on the board over here. Uh, it'll just be easier than me trying to hold this up. But I've got this locked into, um, the outward position, right? The the vaults, the standard vaults, the way that they pinch the the tool material on the harness, you know, they stay in place. They stay out, so you know you you can positively locate it every time. 
you, you have that option here with the, the micro vault. I've got it locked into that outward position. Whoop. But you can also, and here I've got it screwed into a, a two by four. This is, I mean, do this in your garage, in your car, in your truck, whatever. But he, uh, you'll notice that there is, come on, Taylor, get with the camera here. <clears throat> There's a, um, a set screw here. And here I've got it in the, the uh, open or floating position. So this is free to fold either direction. <clears throat> so if you don't want it sticking out for whatever reason, maybe you're uh, sleeping in a hammock or you just, for a particular purpose, you, you, you want it folded when it's not in use, well, that's, um, that's how that works. And it's very easy to convert. I'll try to do it on the fly here. We just remove that screw. Oh, it's kind of tough against the, the block. This is live action here. So I'm gonna remove that retaining screw. If I can get my fat fingers in there, geez. <clears throat> and simply set it in the little cutaway on the other side of the vault. Uh, if you can see, see it's got a little little channel, a little cutaway in it. And that is what keeps the vault in the locked position. I'm not saying you're going to do this on the fly in the tree, but just showing the um, relative ease at which it can be done. If you don't have giant fingers, which most of us tree climbers do. Get that installed. There. So you get the idea. Now it's in a now it's in a fixed position. So pretty cool um, feature for that. Any questions yet, Kale? Yes, Taylor, uh, I have some questions on the pricing for the directors. I would just want to say right now, we don't have the directors up on the website yet. Uh, I am working on uh, getting the rest of everything else uh, that you're talking about on the website right now. Uh, cool. So the pricing on the directors, what are we looking at with that? Okay, you're going to make me open up my uh, price list here. Just, yeah, general, <laughs> general pricing. If I, if I, uh, min let's find out and I'm not sharing my screen or anything, am I? All right. Give me a second here. We're going to find the price list for the directors and they should be right at the top of the page. Okay. Um, these also come in, you know, I'm, sh I'm showing these in um, lock safe gate, you know, for the ARB industry, but uh, we also have screw gate and quick lock, you know, just the two action. Um, so the pricing can be a little bit different there, but for the captive eye director, the one I'm holding up now, the uh, retail price is $39.95. Swivel Eye, the one that I dropped earlier. Uh, let's see, Swivel Eye Lock Safe. This is $79.95. The Yoke Lock Safe should be the same with both rope and webbing spacers. And the Yoke, as I'm squinting at the screen with my old eyes, uh, $48.95 for the yoke. And the swivel boss, whether it's D or bow shackle, lock safe, this is $105.95. Do you need the price for the vaults too? No, we're, we're good on that. The, um, the directors, how much... 
what is, the, like, the gate opening? How many carabiners can you fit in those? Uh, well, the gate opening is as probably um, as small as we could possibly get away with. Uh, the it, it should show on our website. I can pull that up. I, yeah, it's good questions, Kale. I probably should have had uh, probably should have had a more prepared um, list of of uh, specs for you. We'll go to the website and check it out. I could just uh, show you by holding up my pinky finger. Um, but uh, let's get back on screen here. Yeah, so uh, all the directors will have the same gate opening, of course. They have they all have the same body. They just have different uh, accoutrements on the on the end. But like you know, here's my pinky. You know, that's uh, roughly a half an inch. I'm gonna say. Don't you know? Don't quote me on that. But uh, you know, so uh, in terms of you know, here's a you know 12 millimeter anchor ring. Got some space in there. Yep, and it, you know it'll e easily you know fit into <clears throat> you know hitch climbers and things like that. Of course, there's plenty of room, plenty of room for that. All the rigging plates. Uh, what else? I mean, here's a here's a um, gyro pulley. You know, plenty of plenty of room to get that in the gyro. And yeah, another configuration here. Um, I forgot to mention earlier with the uh, you can just captive captivate or capture a pulley into uh, one of the shackles, and you've got yourself basically a swiveling pulley connector. Cool. Okay. Right on. Right on. Yeah. Okay. Directors. Uh, another. It, we we've got the uh, extra small impact block that's been released. You've probably seen some folks using this now. Uh, super cool. Um, obviously a uh, a threaded anchor pin. That's the uh, the mo here at DMM. But it's got this very cool uh, interlocking anchor. Uh, anchor, uh, why, why am I blanking, anchor thimble or anchor bollard. So um, that interlocks. The interesting thing about that is it, we, we would call that doubly, doubly secure, right? Because if you load the anchor swing, I've got another one here. We'll just use this. When I load the anchor sling into, um, into the, uh, the impact lock. All right. If for some reason I didn't screw that in properly or screw the the, the anchor pin in all the way, uh, the when it's under load, that anchor bollard, you know, can't open. So the side plates can't swing when this is under load, even if it's uh, not properly secured here. So just a little added security feature that um i think it sort of happened by happen came about by happenstance but obviously you should of course always secure with uh with it fully fully threaded and locked but that's uh, an interesting feature of that um hauling hauling loop or storage loop of course for if you if you do want to hang it on your harness there's a hollow hollow uh spindle in the um on the anchor side, or uh, sorry, on the um, on the load sheath side, I've got things falling down. And that hollow spindle, you can fit a 10 millimeter rope in there. So it's useful for some applications, floating anchors, things like that. Check out the video that's up uh, on our website. The It's a ball bearing sheath. And our other blocks are uh, bronze bushing, but this is ball bearing. And we we have the sheave. I'm trying to catch the light there, just right. You can see the sheave is is integrated very nicely into the uh, the side plates. So there's there's basically no um, 
Uh, it's, a, it's a very smooth transition between that and the side plates, very rope friendly. So that's the, uh, that's the X, XS impact block. Super lightweight. You can see it just fits in my hand. Lightweight and strong, uh, 100 uh, kilonewton MBS, uh, 20 kilonewton working load limit. What else? We do, st yeah, stowaway. I don't have the stowaways with me, but we could talk about if you've got the uh, Im image on screen. So the stowaway is a uh, is a rubber rubberish. Uh, construction and they're basically gear storage loops for the tree motion but they'll also fit if you use the parking lot uh, adapter plate you can fit them on on pretty almost any other harness on the market and yep there's the adapter plate that'll take the stowaways it'll also take the micro vaults and yeah there you go there's a couple micro vaults on there and here comes the stowaway Right, so that, I think believe that's a Petzl harness that's in the background there. You can also mount these, of course, on on bags as well. So the the um, the Teufelberger bags with the the hole spacing that's the same as the Tree Motion, uh, roughly, and uh, you can also, of course, then use the parking lot to to make all kinds of different stuff uh, configurations. But the stowaways are very cool. They're super strong, super flexible. You can kind of tweak them and bend them in different ways. Uh, depending on how you mount them and there's two different sizes. There's a small size which would basically just take a carabiner and uh, There's a larger size that uh, that'll take um, Yeah, well, there you go two carabiners and then several carabiners or whatever else you want to throw in there slings and stuff um, But yeah, you don't just have to mount them I guess horizontally or side by side like that they can be mounted, you know at an angle all of that uh, all of that uh, all those different options, of course. And my, yeah, there you go. There's some mounted at an angle. So unfortunately, I don't have any with me at the moment. But yeah, if you want to click through those, Kale, that's cool. Um, th there you go. There's one that's kind of tweaked to the side based on how you mount it. And the others are, uh, are, are straight, as it were. So there's some straight ones on the, uh, on the uh, parking lot that's on a Petzl harness. Yeah, there you go. And there's tree motion, super adaptable. And yeah, so it's uh, the kind of more secure, more resilient, and you know can take the place of the of the uh, standard rope uh, tools, uh, rope uh, loops that are on the that are on the uh, the tree motion. And it looks like I'm an Android or something here. Maybe that's just my screen. I'm, I'm, I'm all pixelated. Got any question? Any questions from viewers, or any 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 questions on particular configurations or anything? Right. Sorry, I'll I'll respond so that uh, um, they can hear me now. When using the director, what kind of configurations have you seen arborists using that on? Um, what kind of tools uh, and, and rigging setups. Yeah, cool. Well, I think, um, I mean, the biggest one I've seen so far and, you know, my personal favorite is um, on the end of a, of a lanyard as a, well, I, I prefer a swiveling carabiner on the end of my lanyard. So in the past I would have used a, uh, the DMM shadow carabiner connected with a, a, with a focus swivel. And, you know, and then that ended up being a bit longer and not as compact. So I really enjoy uh, the uh, the director in on the end of a lanyard. Uh, also on the end of a wire core lanyard because you, um, I don't have it set up, but you know, if you, if you use a wire core lanyard, you'll know that they, you know, they, they're pretty stiff and they always, you know, when you're clipping your carabiner in, it's you're always kind of fighting the lanyard to get your carabiner clipped in. So using the the swivel, like I just showed there, swivel on the end of a wire core lanyard, 
uh, the, the swiveling boss director on the end of a wire core lanyard is, is, is really the bee's knees. That's great because that's carabiner can just swivel um, instead of try, you trying to fight the, the wire core all the time. So that would be uh, number one. Number two then is, well, not necessarily in any order, but uh, this for, uh, for a pickoff uh, or, you know, a, a connection uh, to connect yourself to, to the, the person that you're rescuing, the victim, basically. This is great because it's uh, super short, compact, it get, keeps you close, but it also swivels. So if you're connecting to, you know, um, 90 degree opposed surfaces or, or whatever, you've got the ability there. And any movement, you know, these these will swivel instead of um, instead of cross loading, or or you know twisting against like that. And I guess what I should mention, uh, forgot to mention earlier, is that you know the, the the teardrop shape. So these are termination connectors, which means that they're they're meant to be used at the end of something. And uh, you know you connect from the termination point then to whatever you're connecting to here. So <clears throat> it's uh, but meant to be uh, on the end of something, the end of a rope or the end of a lanyard or, or a rigging plate or the end of another carabiner like this. But this teardrop shape is designed specifically to ensure proper loading. So when, when, we, when, we're, when we've got this clipped in, well, for example, just take my lanyard. <clears throat> We've got it connected to the lanyard. That's not going anywhere. And when this is connected to something, which in this case will connect to my, my D on the tree motion. And when, you know, there's a case, maybe you've got some slack in the system or whatever. And now when the, when you, when your weight comes back on that carabiner is always going to locate along its major axis, right? It's, it's, it's always gonna locate that way. There's basically zero chance that it will ever become, um, you know, cross-loaded because of the, of the teardrop design and, the, and the, the fact that it's a termination connector. And another helpful, <clears throat> another helpful Part of that is this is the rhino horn on the back of the spine and the and the wide spine, so it doesn't allow things to drop down. You know, for example, uh, connecting to a rigging plate or a pulley like this, um, that can't fall down the spine and load inappropriately. It's it's always going to keep it up in the top bar of the carabiner here, where it's going to be where it's going to load appropriately along the the major axis of the carabiner. Other, I, I mean, you know, we have seen some pretty cool configurations with in, in the theater rigging or stunt rigging using multiple um, directors in along with our uh, with our linkit system. So that's pretty cool. And I'm sure some tree guy somewhere will come up with something to something to use uh, for that tree person, uh, as it were. Uh, but yeah, basically, if you prefer. Uh, um, a spliced eye or whatever, uh, you know, th that's, this would be good on the end of your lanyard as well. Probably not going to see too many of these on the end of a climbing line. Cause you know, you, you want, you need to be able to disconnect the splice and pass it through things. So, uh, I don't think you're going to see anything there, but I would say lanyards be number one for tree climbers and then stuff like this with a captive, a captive, uh, swiveling pulley you know, for rigging, rigging applications. If you, uh, if you're into that, if you needed quick disconnect or whatever. All right. Are there any other, uh, secret DMM projects that they're working on right now that you can tell us about? <laughs> well, nothing I can tell you about, but, but yes, um, we've got just a ton, a ton of stuff in the, in the works and it's super cool. Uh, to, to see what's coming out of the design office. And I'm sure you'll be super stoked for, 
for 2022 and beyond, definitely. But no, I can't say anything. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for doing this. Uh, do you have anything else you want to say or talk about? Any plugs? Um, tell people to go see your band somewhere. <laughs> now nah, we'll leave that. We'll leave that. They can figure it out. Okay. Uh, if if they want to check it out, we'll keep it professional. But yeah, I guess I just tell everybody, hey, hang in there. Keep doing a great job. You know, keep your head up, man. This this COVID thing is just keeps dragging its heels, and we'll, we'll get out of it eventually. And I hope everybody's staying safe and and healthy and you know just keep climbing make good decisions just just make the best possible decision every step along the way when you're when you're in a tree rigging climbing whatever you're doing just just step back have a think about it don't be in a rush and uh and yeah and then you can hang out and go see some music at the end of the day <laughs> all right well thank you very much taylor for uh being with us and uh have a nice day everybody See you later.